Hello everyone. I hope some of you are there. Anyone there? Oh, Ian Johns. Hello, Ian Johns. How are you? Off from your allotment. My mum used to have a friend called Marion Little, but I don't think it's you. Oh, Cressida, hi. Oh, yes, we've got lots of the regulars here watching, I can see. Hi, Maggie. Oh, hi, Donald. Hi, David, Daniel Wilkie. Hi, Pauline. Oh, it's all the regulars. So, let's have a little chit chat. I'll tell you something, I'm very excited. I've just been out for a meeting. Hi, Donata, Donata. I've been out for a meeting in the churchyard. It was so exciting. And I saw people from Isolation Station that I have never seen in real life before. It was so lovely to be with people out in the sun. But we're all keeping distant. And loads of people come with lots of exciting ideas for the future of Isolation Station Hastings. So that's something to look forward to. Hi, Nicola Marie. Hi, Karen. Hi, Joan. Hi, David. Hi, Anthony Duckles, Anton Deb. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, Anton. Oh, Anthony's on for a change. You don't often do it. Hiya, Tracy. Hi, Brian. Oh, hi, Chris. And Rain, it's my brother and my nephew. Hi, Tom. Oh, it's all the ring. Oh, Robert, fantastic. You're doing it. You haven't done it for a while. Hi, James. You've got a treat, though, because Eve is looking absolutely lovely. She's got a marvellous outfit on and lots of little knickknacks for you to draw. So I think without further ado, no, there is a bit of difference. So Eve's going to keep the same pose. It's up to you if you want to do lots of different pictures or just one big picture. You know the routine now. Send it up when you've finished it. And then there'll all be in an exhibition at the end on Facebook so you can all admire each other's work. So it's very exciting. So let me introduce Eve. Hiya, hello everyone. I'm Eve. Oh. Hello. So Eve, if you sit there nicely, yeah. there's lots of people. Do you remember Ian Johns, he's on there. Yeah. Ian. I don't know if it, Ian Bodenham is as well. Oh. I don't know. Him. Oh, look, oh. Robin has just come up. How much? Do you know him? Yeah, I know everybody that's sort of like Maggie, Alderson, everyone, Chris, Cressida, I work with her on a commercial oh, years ago. I know them all. Oh, well, there's my beautiful Ian, the two Ians. I went to his wedding. Aren't I lucky? Oh, it's the after wedding. Oh, Debbie, darling. Oh, I, look after wedding. I didn't actually see him. Hi, Dina. Hi, Robin. Kiss him again. Friends. It's a weird Oh, he's both of them's on his way. Now, keep oh, yeah. yourself in a nice, still position. Oh, yeah, still. Oh, my if, you, if, you, if you fidget a bit, it doesn't matter. Don't oh, yeah. worry. Don't now, know. just before we cut off, before we were talking before, and you're about to tell me a very interesting story about your flower arranging career at Mars and Spencer's, which is thrilling to me. So, <laughs> could you just tell me the full story? Okay. Well, I was acting for ages, as you well nobody knows nobody knows who the hell i am um yeah. <laughs> i was acting for ages and then it got on my wick and then as lots of things do and then i thought what can i do and then um robert green i think you know robert green oh, he, I was, love robert green. I know, he was doing art director and he said he was looking for a stylist and i said i'm a stylist and he said what the hell can you style and i said i'm a stylist i can style Anyway, obviously I wasn't, and set myself off onto this new career with him. And I ended up doing um, Marks and Spencer's Flowers, the pamphlet magazines, right? Because I oh, love flowers. Like I love your I've been reading them. I love your, <laughs> like, which is why I love your garden so much. When I saw the bath and, the, and all the stuff, I thought, I want a bath, but I don't have a garden. I've got oh. a balcony. But um, Mark, who was that wonderful woman that I did, I walked in with? You know, I walked in at Marks and Spencer's, that wonderful, wonderful florist. Oh, oh, oh. Wait a minute. She was... Harry Packer, something. No, 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 no. It was, uh... oh, she was the most wonderful stylist. And I walk in, um, stylist, flower. Yeah, it was Jane Packer, Jane wasn't it? Packer. That's right. Yeah. So it was Jane Packer. Do you remember Jane Packer? She was wonderful. Well, I know the name, yeah. Oh, it was wonderful. Anyway, I walked into Marks and Spencer's into this boardroom. And as I walked in, they, 
She went, eh, Ferret, what are you doing here? And I said, I'm arranging your flowers. She said, you're joking. I said, no, but I did have to laugh because I wasn't known as a florist. But then I went on to do Elton John's um, a book on Elton John. They asked me, would I do his flowers arranging and um, for this book? Not all of it. They run out of ideas and I had these few ideas. And I ended up in his closet down in wherever he lives down in the countryside. And what they said is, Elton John's in the house. Whatever you do, he can't see you. So, well, so as he was walking through the house, I ran into his closet, but his closet had two doors. You could go in one way and come out the other way into another room. Oh, have you got uh, one like that? Huh? Have you, have you got, got one, one like that? No, I haven't blinking well, even got a wardrobe. I've got a blinking rack. Um, what was I gonna say? Then I um then, and this is something that nobody ever knows. And uh my dad, you see, he always used to say, to brag is the lowest of the low. Yeah. So I ricochet between this kind of, yeah, 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 I can do it, I can do it, do it, to then, oh, no, um, no, better not, better not push myself forward. Anyway, one day I was asked to do this styling job, and they said, you've got to be in um, White, White Chapel, and you mustn't tell anyone. I said, okay. He said, what are you, why, what is it? And he said, we want you to style, you'll never get this, Alexander McQueen's last dress yeah. for the New York, uh, New York Times, wasn't it? The New, the New, the New York no. Post. And um, I went, oh, my God, me. Anyway, it arrived, and I stood there, and any stylist, <laughs> I stood there, and I thought, me, Eve Ferret, with Alexander McQueen's last dress, with me chip nail polish, and I had a steamer, and I had an iron, and I thought, ooh, I'm not quite sure what to use on this. And it arrived, and it was sat, and I thought, I understand this dress. This dress, I've seen, not it, but ones like it in Cornucopia. You know, it was a wonderful old um, vintage shop years ago that I used to get my stuff from, because I've always been a big bird, and I could never get anything to wear. So I used to just wrap something around me that I would find in there. Anyway, um, it arrived, this dress. And I thought, oh, I can't get any water near it because it was um, satin cut on bias. And if any water pranged from my old iron onto it, I knew it would stain. So I did this very kind of, I emptied all the water. I got it very cool. And I just gently like that. And I thought, the whole world will never know that in spirit styled Alexander McQueen's last Because it's obscure, isn't it? Big old gingerbread from Pimlico. Anyway, I did that. I think you're like me. Funny jobs come your way. When I know. Do them, okay. It is really how weird. Have, how, have, have, I, have I got myself in this position? I know, but your position is fantastic, Sue. I love it. Well, it's like when you asked me to do this, I thought, yeah, 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 okay then. And I thought, oh, God, you, you're having a laugh, aren't you? No. You know I mean? And then I thought, oh, God, now, I've got, now they'll see the old crab sitting in her flat thinking, what's she doing? But everyone was so excited because everyone's got so much love for you. Look, see, Eve looks fabulously glam and I'm loving the purple. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I, you know, I always wear black. I love black. And then I thought for this, then I thought, mm, red. No, I've done red a lot. Then I thought, I've got to wear my pen while because I've spent the last few years fanning around with me. Because some people might not exactly know what the word pen noir is. Could you describe your pen noir to them? Yeah, Penoir is a see-through nighty. <laughs> yeah, I used to. I've got a song that I used to. Um, well, I still. Uh, sing. Yes, I used to sing before COVID. You know, Penoir, c'est soi, c'est soi et Penoir. I love my Penoir, and I used to go, uh, I love my Penoir. What is it? I hear you say it's a see-through. Um, nylon frock you can put on night and day. Anyway, one day I was going, nobody knows what Penoir is. And then all of a sudden, that bloody pharaoh and ball brought out a colour. Penoir. What a lady. You see him just there. Gave the hairs on the back of my neck. Stand up. Oh, did it? It was so lovely. You're saying, and I thought, shall I ask you to sing? I go, oh, no, she won't want to. And you've Don't done it without me asking you. Don't make me laugh. Well, so I like the fact it was the hairs on the backs of your legs and not, or was it, did you say neck? Oh, I thought you said on the back of your legs. I like the idea of the hairs. 
yes, on the back of your legs, praying. Yeah, you know, story, isn't it? Going, ah. I know. All the hearts are going mad on my phone. I'm, I'm very cheekily looking on my phone as well, and um, hearts are going mad because everyone's loving it. The um, you was asking me before because um, I didn't think that I'd actually get everyone back because you know at the beginning of this. Oh yeah, the, tell them your drama. Uh, well, it's a drama in the sense that it affected me, but in what, in the scheme of things, with what people are going through, it's nothing. Yeah. I fell the week into COVID. I went to St Thomas's Hospital on the twenty eighth of March, a week yeah. after. I was the only person in there with this arm and this shoulder because I fell flat on my face. I knew it was broke, and um, couldn't open the door with my right shoulder, cracked my right rib. It was a whole scene, and I was in there with a mask. He said, "What have you got a mask on?" I said, "The COVID, the COVID." Anyway, on the Monday, I had to have an operation, a metal plate. I don't know if you can see my scar. It's got, it's gone quite a lot. It's quite well, wasn't it? It's doing really well, uh, really well. And um, I went in, and Mark, my lover, turned around. Mark said, "You went in like the new Doctor Who." Because I had this long black coat on and a big scarf that I was wrapping yeah. around my head. And of course, when I got in there, they said, "We're not going to give you. We're going to have to do your operation on your wrist without putting you to sleep." And I went, "Oh God!" I said, "Is that because I'm a big person?" You know, she sort of said, and they said, "No, we're just doing it like that at the moment. Well, you know, we're not. Put, we're just going to give them a local." Um, could so the young doctor? They said the doctor can he look? Is going to inject your armpit? And I went, "Oh no, not me blinking armpit." And they said, "Why? What don't you want it?" I said, "No, I don't want no young man studying that part of my anatomy." Can you imagine me in the armpit? That horrible old scuzzy bit of one's body that you sort of go, oh, forget about that. And um, whilst I was in there, they I could hear every word they were saying. I promised them I wouldn't talk like I am talking now. Sorry, I do talk a lot. I promised them I wouldn't talk, but I could hear every word they said. So they said, why is this screw bigger than the other three? This is what they said. Why is this screw bigger than the other three? And I thought, I could see my dad, who's passed away, loom straight into my face and going, they're having a blinking laugh, aren't they? And I said, I know, Dad, don't don't say anything, don't say anything. Then they said, "Is um, could I have a 30, please? I don't know what they're talking about. Yeah. And a 20, the nurse, because they couldn't hear each other. They just put the COVID stuff on for the first time that morning. And um, can you, can you, um, and all I could say was when they said no 20, I was going 30, 30, they want a blinking 30, whatever you do, stick the 30 in my hand. I mean, it was a palaver. When I came out, I said, they said it could be on your hair. I said, my hair, nobody's mentioned my hair. So I had that all wrapped up in a blinking <laughs> turban. Then um, I had the surgical tights on that they said to me, I said, I know that it's, uh, you can't really have lots of stuff, but could I have another pair, please? Because yeah. I want to wear them out. And I wore my surgical tights that I wore in my operation out into the street nice. uh, with those red shoes, those red slip-on shoes. And I thought, oh, I'm, I'm going to stand on a heroin needle now. Anyway, that's just my brain. Sorry to let you into it. And um, then uh, I walked out and I thought, I've gone in as the new Doctor Who and I've come out as a granny from Fiddler on the Roof. <laughs> I, I did look like a granny, and I was going, Is this a little girl I carry? I was like, this is pathetic. Anyway, I came home. Then I spent weeks on the couch with me cuff. And my part, my lover, I mean, he's had to pull me drawers up and down. I haven't been able to wear a bra. I'm sure you're not interested in any of these things. But I haven't been able to wear a bra because I couldn't blink if I put the thing on. It's been a dream. I'd like to, how long have you and your lover been together? We will have been together this year. 39 years. And I love the fact you still call him your lover. <laughs> have you ever got married? Are you married? No. Oh, As, well, no. no. We, are, we got engaged when I was 40. And that 
I'd been with him for 17 years or so then. Don't work out anything because you'll get to where I, how old I am. And um, he my, said to my mum, oh, no, that's when I had my, because I had a child, because I don't think people know that I had a child. I hope people, hardly anyone knows about your child. No, because I thought, this is my life, not his. And so I've never put it up on, yeah. on Facebook. Do you know what I mean? Because I thought, I don't want to intrude on him. Yeah. Um, but I remember saying to my mum, when I got pregnant, I said to my mum, oh, I'm going to have to get married now, mum. And she went, don't rush into things. <laughs> You've been with it 17 years. Yeah, 17 years. I thought, no, you're right. Don't rush into things. And also, I've never fancied people standing behind me. Yeah. It's weird. So you've had a very long engagement. We've had a long engagement and... Um, you know, and who knows? And now you can, you can't anyway. But anyway, that's all a palaver. Then I lost my Facebook, lost my yeah. face. I'll tell this story. You got hacked. You? This is all boring for people. When in the scheme of things, because Nothing people you lost their, but in the scheme of things, because people have lost their lives, this is nothing. But I was sitting here with my broken arm, my broken blinking scapula, or whatever you call it, my rotator cuff. And I suddenly saw on my phone, uh, you've got to change your um, Facebook password. Yeah. Pressed it, and that was the beginning. When I pressed that, that was the moment that they then could change the password, whoever they are. Then they, um, they then posted, uh, which I didn't know, all different things, uh, terrorist-related, um, uh, terrorist related illegal pictures and then this is the thing that really got me and I know and I shouldn't really say this but yeah. this is the bit where I broke down and cried because I thought I've broken my bones but they've broken my mind because Aww. I cried when they turned around and said Facebook said and you've incited people to commit suicide <gasps> and at that moment I went Oh my, and I dropped everything. I cried, and you know, because I, I have lost people to this terrible thing, and I just sort of thought, I can't, you know, I, it's just the most awful thing. Then I tried to get it back. Then I left it, and I thought, I don't care about this anymore. Ten days later, PayPal suddenly said, "You've had two hundred pounds taken out of your PayPal account." Yeah. Then I got two hundred pounds out of a credit card that's not in there, and then I just thought, I can't bear it. Facebook will never let me back in again. I've lost everything for it. All my mates, I've got quite a few back now, thank God. And I sat here. Two times, Facebook's lovely, isn't it? I like, you know, I was going off it, but it's just so nice to keep in touch with your friends. It's so wonderful because, and that's what I missed, and that's what I thought. And I thought, I don't care if people come to see my blinking Babbery show. I don't care that you have to have a certain amount of followers to, um, you know, you know, acting now is really weird. You could be, um, you could be, they want a big old ginger bird to come in on the fourth scene in a play and so they look at the casting people whatever they look and go oh that person's got a couple of thousand that person's got nobody we'll have the person with a couple of thousands it's got nothing to do with talent you know and i just think oh god and then i just thought well there will be a different way of doing things somehow you know but uh, i got through that bit um and i just think how lucky for me friends because these people that i've known i've known these people that i've got back yeah. About, and it, about 500 now, all of them I know. Some of yeah. them I them because they've called their names like Foo Foo Flip Flop. Yeah. I don't know who they are. And I can't remember. I know when if I go in, but I can't find them to go in. Do you know what yeah. I mean? I just thought, well, how lucky am I to have had a laugh with all these people on, you know, whatever they're going through, all the terrible emotion that we're having you know, for people that we know, people that we don't know, we're ricocheting day to day. And I just thought, I just want to be able to be with my friends and feel safe. And I do. Oh, good. Right. Has anyone got any questions? I'll have a little yeah. question. Then we'll go into, I think, your childhood. Are you oh, Marion Little? She was a student nurse at Claybury Hospital. She used to come and oh. see you with John Slevin. Oh my God! This is a, such a lot. Sorry, I need to get my uh, my You <laughs> well, at the Blitz with my friend. Okay, what I was going to say. Sorry, because it's brilliant actually when your eyesight does start to fade as you get older because you think, well, I look all right. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you can't see yourself. Um, I've just had my cataracts done. I've realised how filthy my flat is. <laughs> Have you? What both of them? 
Yeah, well, just before, uh, one just after Christmas and one about two months after, just before this. Yes, Robin Haiti, you're meant to be drawing. Oh, yeah. You don't um, have to if you don't want, but it'll be a lovely picture. No, I was really lucky in, um, people don't know, because people do a different time um, span for the time of the Blitz. Yeah. But in, um, I kept looking for years and years to be able to have the chance to sing somewhere, anywhere, I don't know, with a piano. And I saw an ad in the stage that said, singers in the style of George Formby or Vera Lynn. And I thought, oh, well, I'm, I'm a bit like George. <laughs> um, having spent all this time looking in the new M NME and all these things where it said, we need a singer, blonde, uh, very slim, this, you know, tonight. I couldn't find anywhere. Anyway, it was the Blitz. I walked into the Blitz, which was a nightclub, for those who don't know, for Great Queen Street in, um, the autumn of 1976, I found the actual ad that I'd put in a piece of paper. This, I've got my first job. And the singer called Larry said, uh, high or low? And I didn't, you know, I didn't understand all that. I hadn't rehearsed it. So I said, and he went, he played. And I went, the way you wear your hat. And midway, he changed it. The man we are all that. You know, like this. It was like a, a whole madness. But they liked me enough to start singing there. And I met Biddy there. He'd already been singing there with Richard Jones, Richard Humphreys Jones, who became the um, huge opera uh, director. And mm -hmm. he was our pianist and we joined together. And that was the start in 76, all about the time um, where the Roxy started. We you oh, know, yeah. I looked like this and I shot off with Andrew Trowski and Sue um, to the punk, punk things, which I bloody loved. And I remember thinking to Biddy, um, oh, I was thinking of having black lips, but it's a bit passe. And that was in 1976. Anyway, I um, so it's 77 and we, we got on and everything like that. And we just had the best time. It, we had no social media. Nobody knew you about us. We were word of mouth. And, we had the, and then a couple of years later, about 78, 79, Steve arrived, Steve Strange, and then it entered into another thing. But most people that I've known came before, like Fiona Dealey, Stephen Jones, Stephen Linnard. Everybody used to come to the Blitz before it became well known, as it were. Yeah. It was already happening. Yeah, because I never really knew you in those days. I only knew you sort of later on in life, but everyone thought we knew each other. Do you know what I mean? One of those I know. Things. I always thought, oh, she's so marvellous, that woman. Pardon? And, uh, but you're so marvellous. But you're you're a, a tad younger than me. And then... Oh, no. One year. Yeah. <laughs> Don't tell them how old I am. And then... Um, but what, how old I am. You know how it is when you're younger, anyone that's a few years younger than you, you don't, it's a bit like school, you know, you don't really know the fifth year, you don't know their thing. Yeah. I always knew you, I knew, you know, um, you know, because I did the alternative Miss World. Look, I lovely hands. Can you keep them still for a few minutes for him? Oh. I know it's hard for you. Lovely. Hold them up a bit. There we go. Yeah, there you go. Because they're lovely. Right. Now, David, I'll ask her in a minute about that. I'm going to ask her about her teenage years. Did you brought up in London, weren't you? We you brought up in Pimlico. Oh, yeah, I've got to keep my hands. I must stop fidgeting. How can I lay my hand like that? Lay, lay, it, lay, lay it there. Lay it. Oh, just lay them there. Lay them there. I don't know what to do with them. Um, the... Uh, I grew up in Pimlico. I still live in the same street I was born. My sister, mum um, and dad always... You know, I lived, and it's really weird. I was talking to somebody the other day when they were talking about, you know, their childhood, and I thought, I lived in the same, I didn't have a horrible childhood, I had a wonderful childhood. I lived in the same room, or shared the same room, with my mum and dad and my brother, and the kitchen was there, and we had the loo and um, bath out on the landing. Yeah. My nan was above us, and then my mum, who had six sisters, there were seven sisters, all lived in the rooms in this one house in Pimlico. So your whole family just lived in one room, really? No, yeah, well, my family That's just lived in one room. room. Yeah, yeah and I was eight. And I thought it was normal. Nobody sort of said it wasn't. Do you know what I mean? And you let yourself in with a key behind the door. And, you know, if if nobody was in, I'd just hang, <laughs> I'd hang out the window waiting for somebody to turn up. 
because then you were allowed, which sounds really Dickensian now when you think about it. I went to school on my own when I was seven, took my brother, you know, sort of like got number two bus from here, about four yeah. or five blocks to Brixton to go to the Astoria Brixton for the Saturday morning pictures, but on yeah. my own. Yeah. But I think did that now. They'd say there's something, you know, what's the this woman's been, this girl's been abandoned. Mark Albert says you're the original Pimlico Bell. Oh, you Mark are. Albert is so sweet. You know, I have, when I go out, I go out quite a lot on my own, mainly because my partner thinks, oh. But I go, I have over the years gone out on my own. And uh, I go, I'll be fine. I'll be absolutely fine because I know everyone there and we just have a laugh. It's like an old people's youth club. Am I allowed to say that? Yeah. Oh, I think living down here is like an old people's youth club. Yeah. We go out and everyone's old, drinking, having fun, dressing up. I know. Yeah. Not like, it's not like the youngsters of London. Now, so you were a teenager in Pimlico in this lovely house with all your family upstairs and downstairs. And yeah. but I think I lived a bit like that when I was a child in Paddington, the big house, and we all lived with my auntie and uncle and my cousins. We all lived in the same house. It was nice. But anyway, that's not about me. So... What happened to your world of showbiz when in your teenage years you thought, I want to be a singer or an actress? Well, I always, you know, I always did weird things like if Clark Gable was going to be on the TV, I put on a bit of lipstick. <laughs> or just in case he could see me because, <laughs> because obviously my mind was sort of like whirling. I love Frank Sinatra so much. And I used to get his album and I used to read everything on the back. And that's how I discovered people like Billie Holiday, who I have to say, when she first, when I first got her album from a little record shop down the road and put it on, I thought, <gasps> my record player's broke. Because I didn't understand her Im magical voice, you know, you know, uh, now don't explain. I thought it was something something to me. And then I fell in love with her. And I thought, wouldn't it be wonderful just to be able to sing somewhere with a piano? And um, and I did. I, well, it took me a bloody long time, I have to say, because um, I just couldn't find any, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't find my gang, as it were. I didn't know that they were out there. I didn't know, I didn't know where they were. And then when I found, when I entered the Blitz nightclub, I remember this guy called George, and he said to me, George Haben, he said, you're one of us. And I said, what do you mean? He said, you will meet them around the world. They won't have a label, but when you speak to them, you'll know they're one of us. And I went, oh, my God. And I have met, over the years, I've gone, oh, my God, they're one of us. He's one of us. That's one of us. And it's people that you don't have to explain yourself to. Yeah. You don't Sometimes you can just see one walking down the street and you go, yeah, they'd get me. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And it's so important because what this COVID thing has taught me and losing my friends and what have you is never mind the house, the car, the holidays, the this and that. The only thing we've got is us. Yeah. We've only got us. And if we, you know, I want to be able to, uh, well, we've only got us and truth. I can't bear it. Well, at the moment, I'm discommunicated because I don't know what's true, what's not true, what this has been told to me. So that is very difficult. But like what I was saying to you before um, we, we went on here soon, I've been self-employed since I was 18, well, before that, 17 or 18, you know. Oh, I'll get a job as a telephone operator. Oh, I worked at Brixton Probation Service. A bit like you, Sue. Mm -hmm. um, I used to work at Brixton probation service on the switchboard and they used to give me my own little bit of money yeah. and to give out to people that I felt would be um would need it and uh I'd get all phone calls like if you don't get someone round here in a minute I'm gonna chuck my baby out of the window and I said oh come and chuck the baby from here on board and they said oh we need you can I come and see you and I thought that's the way I was going to kind of go a bit more social worky sort of yeah. thing when I worked in Camden Job Centre, someone actually did leave their baby there. Did they? Yeah, a man went, so I can't be dealing with this, and just left the baby on the counter. <laughs> About a half hour later, the poor mother came in sobbing to rescue him. <laughs> so oh, you were there for years, weren't you? Yeah, years. Years. Right now. So, no, so now, how, so 
So when was your first acting job? How did you get that? Oh, well, I was with Biddy for about five years. Yeah, doing singing all... on the scene. Huh? Singing on the scene, the yeah, nightclub. The thing, but also we did all really amazing. Uh, well, I say amazing because I've been oh, doing... Oh, what were We did things like we supported Duran Duran on their first opening night. Where yeah. that, when they opening night, their first big night at the Sundown in London where they did Top of the Pops, and they came from Top of the Pops, and they came here, we supported them, supported them. Um, I suddenly got a phone call here in this flat, I think, mm -hmm. and it said, because um, I've lived here forever, and they said, um, hello, and I, th I thought he said, this is the exchange of Mart. And I thought, what's a car magazine phoning me up for? Do you remember? Oh. Yeah. Actually, I said, he said it's the um straight oh, i'm slumping i might might be annoying people by moving yeah. um i was a car magazine he said i'm a director and i went oh yeah here we go he said i'm a director at the royal exchange theater and that's yeah. where exchange of mark from the royal exchange theater in in manchester and uh, we'd like you to be in our play i said i'm not an actress mm. No, but I can't find any young, blousy woman. To oh, be in I'm glad you said that word. Oh, uh, yeah. Is the bit, it, that just sums you up perfectly. <laughs> blousy woman. And so I said, oh, right, what do I have to do? And, um, oh, good. It's as if I've, it's as if I've, but I've been looking for oh. my stuff. This is what it was, the Royal Exchange Theatre in Manchester. And in that... Um, play apart from people like Linda Marlowe, amazing John Sessions and everything, was Hazel O'Connor. Oh, yeah, and we've become friends ever since we did gigs. We've done gigs, I've got pictures somewhere of me. Doing... Don't tell my friend Tracy Brown who's watching, she'll be beside herself. She's obsessed what? with Hazel O'Connor. Oh, Hazel O'Connor's amazing. <laughs> There's a picture in here of her, it's all signed, you know, Hazel. But, um, wasn't safe, but that was, and I got that job, and I thought, oh, and that's when I got Bell's palsy. I'm always having oh. things. No, I'm <laughs> loving this. <laughs> no, I got Bell's palsy, and the director, uh, the director said, "Oh, you're coming up." And I said, "Yes, I'm coming up on the train." I said, "I've just got one thing to tell you," and I said, and "He said what?" I said, "I've got Bell's palsy." He said, "What's that?" I said, "The left side of my face has dropped." In fact, Mark, Mark thought I'd had a stroke, and, he, and that's the only time he said, "I'm going to have to marry you now because nobody else will have you." But anyway, yes. that's another story. But I got Bell's palsy, and um, he said, "Oh my God, what are we can do?" I said, "Don't worry." The Royal Exchange is in the round, and I'll just mm. keep moving. I'll just keep moving. Nobody will see. <laughs> but I had that. That was a scene. I had to go on steroids. But um, And that was the beginning of my acting career because after that, I got an agent, Sharon Hamper. And that Sharon Hamper was the end of my acting career as well. Okay. Uh, Sharon Hamper was the beginning of my acting career, and I was very lucky to do things in the West End, you know, Yak to Yak, yeah. the McGann's and the Darts. And look, I've done lots of plays, and then I managed to go over into film. Yeah. You know, but a bit like, you you know, but then because my eight, which people don't know this bit as well, I should actually write it down. I might have a pamphlet of my life. A, pam <laughs> a pamphlet of my life. <laughs> I don't know why you're not on television the whole time. You're so hilarious. Oh. I watch you all day long. Oh, and I am. Um, oh no! And then I was. Uh, then I. Oh, then, do you know? Remember, um, David? Oh, it's so funny because you know I've lost my my name, and they won't allow me to have Eve Ferret. I've Eve Dot Ferret, and I just was on this morning trying to do my page, and it says, "What's your username?" I put Eve Ferret. Oh, you can't have that. I thought, but it's me. It's a bit like when I phoned up Spot um, Spotlight when I went to rejoin, and I said, um, "Oh, hello." Uh, I want to, was it Spotlight or what was the Equity? I found out Equity and I said, hello, um, I want to rejoin. Sorry, I'll, you're making the laugh out loud. I said, I want to join, um, rejoin Equity. And they said, oh, what's your name? So I said, E Ferret. And she went, oh, let us just check and see if anyone else has taken that name. Yeah. I thought, what blinking person would choose Eve Ferret for a name and become well known? But that, but that was where, and that was weirdly because I just posted something. Um, I just posted something that I was in a thing with David Bow, which sounds all big-headed, but I am. Um, I've never really said about it because I never. 
I really liked him afterwards, but because I never fancied him because he was so skinny. Who? Bowie? Bowie. Yeah. yeah. Bowie. I would say Bowie. It's very cockney and it is Bowie. Um, but I just posted it last night on Facebook and they said, um, take this video down. It's You've now been banned in 176 countries. And I thought, why now? I don't know. It's Warner Brothers or something. And just think, oh, God, I had to take it down. And I thought, oh, you can't do anything. But he said to me when I first met him, um, doing Jazzing for Blue Jean, which is this video that he did. Yeah. I didn't know what was going to happen. The first thing, when I saw him, I opened my gob and I went, oh, my God, you haven't got a brown eye at all. You've got yeah. a big pupil. That's what I said to him. And because at the time nobody had written about it so much in, you know, we know everything about him now, but not yeah. then. You know, you'd have had to have got been a big fan. And he said, can I ask you a question? I said, yeah. What? He said, why did you choose the name Eve Ferret? And I went, and I thought, and having watched something over the weekend, I thought, oh, he was obsessed with names. I said, um, no, that's my name. I was born a ferret. You know, and I think it's a fantastic name. I, I was born a ferret. I found out recently, um, oh, never mind what I found out. I do chat. Does anybody want to ask me a question about anything? Yeah. Any question? I've seen some are popping up. Let's see what anyone. Have you still got the stuff ferret that you oh, used to that, have that, that, that. That. Mark, get me stuff, Ferret. Oh, well, not here. <laughs> I love your glamorous assistant getting all your stuff for you. Yeah, no, it's, it's not here. Yeah, no, I have got my stuff, Ferrets. Now, that was another thing. I thought, what would, I thought, but it wasn't for publicity or anything. I thought, oh, I'd love a ferret on a wheel. A yes, bit yes. like um, when I was working on the switchboard at a, an advertising agency called Boston Senior Pollitt, and they said, um, have you got any ideas for Toyota? And I said, yeah. Make me a ferret mobile with furry paint. Yeah. And I could drive along and they can say, even a ferret mobile can't pass a Toyota. And they go, <laughs> what sense does that make? I said, no sense, but I'd have a, a, a ferret mobile. I love the idea. Anyway, I had these ferrets and I used to wheel them around. And I don't really, I know why I stopped using them. And that was because I went to a party. We're not running out of time, are we? We've got oh, 20 minutes left. All right. I went to a party. And, the, um, and when I walked into this party, they said, oh, it's a shame you've arrived late, Eve. Bianca Jagger was just here. Mm -hmm. I don't know Bianca Jagger. I thought, well, what's that got to do with me? Anyway, next minute I'm chatting to this little bird, dark hair, and I thought, funny. If you hadn't told me that she'd left, this could be Bianca Jagger, but it's mm. not it's gone. Anyway, chat, 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 chat. We got on really well. When she left, the person who, the original person who was running the party said, you bitch, you never told me you knew Bianca Jagger. I said, I don't. And said, you've just been chatting to her for 20 minutes. Anyway, <laughs> I said, but you told me that she'd left. How was I to know it was her? Anyway, the next day in the paper, it had, Enormous fat woman. No! In, this is what it said. Enormous fat woman in black carrying blood sucking rats on a lead. And my best friend phoned me up and said, Here, you're in the paper. It didn't even mention my name. And I do still know that, that person. And I still have that cut in. I thought, That's it. The ferrets are gone. Blood sucking rats on a lead. They're not for me. But I brought them out recently. Oh, I'm loving this. Now, tell me people people love hearing stories about David Bowie. So what was he like? Oh, people want to know about absolute beginners as well. How did you get that job then? I'd had it before the um, uh, his jazzing for Blue Jean um, and uh, with Julian Temple. With... Was that the video he made at the Wag Club? He didn't make that jazzing. Well, he might have made a bit of it at the Wag Club it's because the um, Club. Chris... So, oh no, it might have been that internal. Chris Sullivan's definitely in it. He had a starring role as well. But it's um, we did shot my scene was shot at the back of the Savoy. Yeah. Um, and it was like a tryout because the girl that is in that scene, Louise, was going to be the part of Patsy Kenzie. Yeah. So all the the different people that were in that video six months before Absolute Beginners. Was started to be shot. Were it was like a test, 
Yeah. I remember um Barry was sort of like amazing. You said to he was he was amazing in the sense that he was very real and mm -hmm. very kind. And he gave me his time in the sense he, he said, Oh, what was happening? Where'd you come from? Pimlico and all this. And he said, and we started singing this old Cockney song that my family used to sing. So there was because Could I was singing for us. I like your singing. Yeah, well, this is I was gonna say oh, well, call round any old time, make yourself at home. And if you imagine Bowie was doing it, and he has that very Anthony Newley, yeah, very, very Anthony Newley voice. And then I put it on more like the pub because I don't actually sing quite like I'm going to sing now. So I, so I put it: put your feet on the mantel shelf, open the cupboard and help yourself. I don't care if your friends have left you all alone. A rich, and he's singing it the same and the same way, you know, that kind of cockney way he has. Rich yeah. or poor, and he knew every word. Knock at the door and make yourself at home. He he said, Are you going to be on Absolute Beginners? And he, I said, Yeah, and he said, I'll see you there. Anyway, yeah. mm, six months go by, I'm on set of Absolute Beginners. I've spent four hours in makeup trying to make an Edwardian face look like the 1950s. And I've got all this blue um, eyeshadow, I've got all these eyelashes, and I walk onto set in leopard skin, and the first thing that a man says to me is, you look fantastic, just like Divine. <laughs> Talk about backhanded compliments. No, no, so I went, I went, I started to cry, because it's very me, you have to sort of understand me as well. So but I thought, I can't let this makeup be um, run all down my face. I said, because I've just spent hours doing it, so I put my head to the floor like that, and that, it was horizontal tears. Yeah. And um, and I thought, don't worry, Eve, don't worry, you've had things like this before, you know, don't worry that he's just said that, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter, you know, come on, you're going to do this scene, don't worry about it. Anyway, all of a sudden, the there's a very weird hum that sort of goes around when Bowie's are on set or doing anything. Bowie's here, Bowie's here, Bowie's here, Bowie's here. And uh, all of a sudden, He's walking across set and he comes up to me and he said, hello, Ferret, how's it going? And I just thought, Dying, you know, this is six. He knows millions of people. He's met millions of people. And I just thought, oh, my God, I needed you at that moment, Mr. Bowie, because yeah. I feel like a pile of poo, you know. That, uh, and um, and I just thought, wow, what a, what a very special man he was and very talented. I mean, as we know. But everyone always speaks highly of him who've met him, don't they? Oh, oh, here we are. Would you consider doing a Pistols cover when you start gigging again? You've got the attitude. Oh, would you? I like I like the fact that I looked at um, David Francis. Yeah, you know that. Um, do you know from what Glenn Matlock? Do you know Glenn Matlock? He did. Yeah. A, he's such a wonderful um, person as well as a performer, yeah. and he played guitar for this um show that we did with swanky modes yeah um and he one of them with... lives here doesn't she yeah she does judy yeah. up on the hill um uh so she um oh yeah so for years for 40 years he kept kept my may west album I got it back recently because I saw him. And I thought, oh, it's a bit funny, really, because I love the idea of him having my Mae West album in his collection with all his fancy friends, I was going to say. But not fancy, but... He's on David Bowie still. No, 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 I'm on Ben Matlock from Sex Oh, Ben Matlock, sorry, I got... Um, and um, it's... Uh, he... Um, but I got it back, and we and I, I started singing it in my show. You know, I take them big and small, red and blue and sharp and tall. Lots of men. Bum, 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 bum. But you first gave me confidence. You know that Sue, when you came to see me at the arts, um, arts theatre, um, when I started singing my own songs, and you said, "Oh, I love that song." I said, "I bet it's an original song, Sue." And you go, "No, I love." That's why I, I came with um, Derek and Tony, and I didn't really know them then, and now they live around the corner. It's unbelievable. I, Derek, I love Derek. I seeds from a bath. Life goes round in circles. And you've got that wonderful, wonderful place that just outside Hastings, 
um, what's it called? Harbour, no, not Harbour. Harbour yeah. Nursery is the only run. Yeah, Harbour. Harbour, yeah. I was going to say the Harbour. Yeah. The Harbour Nursery is where it's got the most amazing plants. Yeah, I know. The most brilliant art director in the whole world. Oh, he's there, Tony. He's there. Oh, wow. Hello, Tony. Oh, oh how marvellous. I've known them for years. Oh, and Sarah Jane Morris. Hello. Oh, she lives the corner. She Sarah lives Jane. Next door to David Brasher. They're all on here. What is it? Lincoln, the big friendship village. I'd have to turn. What's this? Winter art. Oh, well, we'll have a look at Eve. Oh, I think someone's told them how to Eve, post. I've had a late lunch. What's that? Say, say that again. What's it? I've had a late lunch. What's he saying? I've had a late lunch so I can draw you on an old paper bag. How do I post the pic before I go back oh. to work? I need the paper bag for me, Ed. It's how much every time you pick up those opera glasses, I'm just laughing so much because only you have opera glasses. Mimi Salsa, you are phenomenal, my beloved friend. Oh, that's so wonderful. He's so Thank wonderful. You, Morris, we love you. Oh. Oh, no, I'm, just so, I'm so lucky to have the best friends because I don't know what it is. We all want to do things. We all want to, um, I don't know. It's, oh, I might have a little tear. I might have a hot oh. chocolate. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm feeling all buzzy listening to you because it's so wonderful. Actual. Tony Howard is actually Harbour Nurse who's now watching. Oh, oh my God. Everyone has got to go there. It is the most wonderful, wonderful place. And you know when you see, I can never name plants, but you know when you see something like, and you go, oh, I love it. I've got to have it. It's, he's got it. He's got everything you could ever possibly want. Oh. the most wonderful husband, I have to say, Derek. Oh, yeah. And what, else now? what else do we need to ask? Any questions? Yeah, any questions? Oh, th oh, I know the loveliest of people. Oh, thanks, Despo. Despo always does my art. Don't put a paper bag over your head. You are gorge. You are. Oh, thank You're you. Love I remember when I first moved here and I was driving down King's Road oh. towards the station. I thought, that woman looks fantastic. I thought she's one of us. And then I looked and it was you. I think I almost ran you over. I was so excited to see you. I know. I do love Hastings and St. Leonard's. I do pop down there quite a lot. Well, I used to years you ago. You went to the Lit show at Lucy Bell, didn't you? I did. Oh, well, um, something like, what music and fashion were you into when you were a teenager? Um, vintage. Um, yeah. I know because I, I, all my girlfriends, they were. it was a, a sort of a skinhead era. And yeah. people had white, white tights, you know, with holes in them going up the oh, side. That, and bro, I never, I never suit that didn't suit me. That look, I never went for. No, that. and mow hair with them um, keyhole cut out, yeah. and Prince Wales check. And I went to Marlborough Girls School. And I used to go charging off and trying to fit in, trying to fit in, you know. And I couldn't get anything on. And in the end, I just went to Cornucopia down the road. And uh, and the thing is, I've always been a vintage girl, but a lot of them vintage women, the waist. Of them dresses comes up, cuts you across the tits. I mean breasts, yeah. and you, like that. But you can always fiddle about. And when I used to go in there, I'd go, oh, I think I'll have an, uh, I think I'll have a an earring. You know, an earring you can always do with a nice earring or a nice handbag. Yeah, something that will fit. A little um, handbag or something. And also, I was influenced. Well, I love Rod Stewart. When when the Bowie thing was happening, I was going off. Uh, it's a bit like now, Billy No Mates. I, I just keep laughing that I've got this um, Facebook band page with no friends on it. But anyway, I don't care about that. The um, uh, is uh, Marvin Gaye. Yeah. So I think to people, oh, will you come and see Marvin Gaye with me? And they say, oh, no, not not really. You know, this, and I go, but it's a, you know, and I, I take my sister. My sister said, always says, thank you so much for taking me to see all those most amazing artists. Rod Stewart, oh. I up for him in um, in uh, Kilburn, I had to go to the phone box. Hold, so I said, hold my place in the queue. And I had to phone up my mum. I said, mum, I need more tickets. You're going to have to come up here. They'll only give me two. So my mum came up on the number 16 bus to stand in the queue. I love things like that. Anyway. Uh -huh. now, how have you enjoyed lockdown? How's it been for you, besides breaking your arm and being knocked off Facebook? How else has it gone? Well, I had hoped in that first week before I hurt myself and knocked off, knocked off. 
somebody stole my face and what was going to say before any of that happened um <laughs> i was um um thinking that i am um, might have learned french no yeah might have done it no might have cropped me hair and gone blonde no and no. um, nothing has changed all it is is that i cry for all the hope in all of us yeah and we've got hope because we've you know all these poor people that have lost their families you know members of you know their members and everything and that's why i couldn't talk the first the first week or so i had got somebody from around here who was in um, st thomas's hospital on the ventilator and then somebody else and i thought i i feel frozen i don't quite know you know i couldn't sing i couldn't do anything i felt mm. i i don't know what, how to behave even and now and now we have to sort of like emerge and with the knowledge of every all this pain certain but some people have not experienced any of it what have i learned just that if we don't have us and by us i mean our the group we're always welcome to new people coming into the group but they have to be all encompassing yeah. they have to like us all of it we don't care where we come from what we got what we haven't got I, I don't care about any of that just if you're kind if you're um willing to have a bit of a laugh do you know what i mean all these do thoughtful think of other people thoughtful uh which i've i think we've us a lot the, the ones that i've known all my life that's how we've been and we we, uh, we haven't learned anything from that you know i've never had many money in my life when i was young i never had any money or anything but now I don't even care. I don't want money because life and your experience is so much more worthwhile. I don't, you know, I don't need a two thousand pound bag. I just no. need what I've got around me, my knickknacks. I know you need a fish bag, Mark. Is my fish bag to hand? <laughs> if my fish bag's to hand, I think they might enjoy it. I think we I've will. got a fish bag. Uh, he's gonna just get me a fish bag. They, he's just sort of like, because um, we live, you know, like people. Oh, it makes me laugh. You know when they sort of go, uh, oh, I'm bored. You think of what? Do you I'm know what never I mean? Like, I, I I long for the time to look at a skirting board and go, it's clear, it's clear. The skirting board is clear because obviously living in, a, um, we've got a two bedroom flat. You know, it's good. We, we kind of do the the shuffle. Like I go, oh, I'm in the kitchen. Now I'm in the hall. Thank you so much, lover. This is oh, my fish bag. That's lovely. Don't you love it? You see now so the thing, many lovely things. The thing is, you could go out just wearing the same old rubbish. Do you know what I mean? Because you think, okay. and then you've got a nice little bag, and people go, "Oh, that's a lovely bag," and you go, "Oh yeah, do you like it?" You know, distraction, distraction. Oh, what are the other little knickknacks you got behind? You got a nice cushion with the lady on it. Who's oh, yeah, I had. Can you see her? I was kind of. I thought that we might. She's nude. Oh. I thought she might. Oh, fantastic! I thought, can you see it? She goes on. She she's she's nude, but I thought, oh, I keep getting banned from everything. I better be careful what I'm putting out. I've got over here. I've got my baby Shan glass. Anybody that knows me and my baby Shan. Beautiful. Don't mind, no bubbles from away. None from Krug or Crystal. Don't want no bubbles from away. None from Krug or Crystal. I just want my bubbles from Baby Shan. Cause I'm that kind of gal. Did you write that song yourself? Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Have you got an album out or anything? Oh, I've got an old album. I'm thinking of putting it out. But you know, every time... I don't know. I'm thinking of putting um, some new stuff, lots of new stuff. I do have an album out. It's got all my, uh, uh, what's it called? Pimlico Bell, some bloody yeah. bell. Ring a ding ding. I Sorry. Um, what else, Lou? Anything? Anybody want to ask me anything? No. What are you going to be doing? What are you going to think planned for after this? Any concerts or anything? Well, I did, and like everybody else, they've all been taken down. Mm. I'm going to buy myself a roach pole. If anybody what? knows a roach pole, it's what they use yeah. in fitness, it's extendable. 
yeah. like that you can kind of go um you can kind of go right that's six feet away stay away do you know what I mean like that no I don't know because everybody's done things online I uh this is must be the fourth time I've ever done anything online but the other three times was just private a little yeah. private zoom shot to sort of see what it's like imagine it I don't want to ask people for money or anything I don't know I'm going maybe I'll just put out a few of my poems to be no. honest I could watch you 24 hours you're so funny and amusing oh thank you I think That's everyone cool. else is joining as well we've only got five minutes left so okay. any more burning questions we need to I'll get my glasses let's have a look she put us please release a new cd oh thank you so much i think i i think do you know what the sometimes what happens is i lose my confidence which i think a lot of people do have a little thing in the shoulder that says you're rubbish really um you're never rubbish no but you're, you're rubbish really and then you go oh, yeah i fancy doing it i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do that i'm gonna do this and then i think okay now i've got quite a few songs and i've written something and i thought you know you know, I, I, I tell you what I did do. I um, recorded, because I always have this thing where nobody, nobody records it. I record a bit and I put it out, you know, put it out a little bit, a little bit, so people can see what I'm going to, what I do, you know. Yeah, you do a live at home thing. Sarah J. Morris, because she does them, so she might be able to tell you how to do it. Oh, um, that's great. Yeah. Oh, Doug Patterson wants to move in with you. Does he? Thank you, Dodgers. <laughs> don't pass, where is he? Wait a minute, you're live. At, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, you're coming and going. You're upset. You're confusing us. I'm confusing you. Yeah. Oh no, sorry. Um, I've chatted a lot, haven't I? People will think, God, she chats. No, I think people have loved every single word I have. The gems you've come up with. I can. I can be quiet. The um. Oh, should I tell you this? I'll just tell you before I go this this other thing, which I sometimes say on stage and I think. I was asked recently to be, um, a couple of years ago, to be in, uh, they wanted me to audition for Carousel. And I thought, oh my God, that's the song that, that's the film that my dad went to see the night I was born. Oh my yeah. God, you know, if I loved you time and And I go, and I, the, my favourite line, longing to love you. But afraid and shy, I let my golden chances pass me by. So I love that song so much. I get there and they say, oh, we don't need you to sing. You've come as the part of Mrs. Mullins, the old fairground attraction person. No singing faded over the hill over the top and done in and i thought that bloody shows it isn't it sorry i thought i'd just tell you that i'll have to write my own blinking musical because you know i was thinking of calling my um my musical and i was going to put it to you my gray bush <laughs> or my old gray bush after gray gardens but yeah. gray bush what do you think? Nice. You think anyone can? I think you should have a nicer name than that. You're more oh. than a great bush. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Sue. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Francesca Luther King, Fab. Someone else, I think, beautiful voice, see? Oh. Someone else has said they want you to come and play down St. Leonard's. I'm sure oh. we can get a spot for you here. Please, brilliant. Come to St. Leonard's. Oh, I'd love to. Thank you so much. Oh, look, Ted Walker. I've got to write these blinking names down afterwards because half of these are people I've had as friends and they're blinking gone. Oh, yeah, remind you. Write a memoir, my old bush. Never apologise for chatting. That's true. <laughs> my old uh, bush, they be saying. I love the idea so much because I love, oh, that was another story, the Great Gardens. I said, I, I cared for, my mum sadly is not with us anymore. I don't put this sort of stuff on Facebook. But uh, I cared for her for years. And there was this one night that I wanted to see Great Gardens over at the Southwark Playhouse. And I said to her, mum, I can't stay. I'll be back in a minute. 
a couple of hours. I said, I'll be back in a minute. I just need to go and see this play. And she said, don't go. So I said, oh, this is going to be sad, actually. So I said, but, Mum, I, I just want to see this. And she said, if, if, you, um, if you loved me, you'd stay, is what she said. I mean, I'm going to end on a downer. And I went off to see it. And when I got there, the stage manager, I said, I said, I said, oh my God, this set is my set. And he said, yes, I know. And I said, no, but it really is my set. And he said, no, I know. And I said, oh God. And then when it started and they started singing and she started singing all the times and she has nine songs and she does that, I thought, my God, it is my life kind of thing. Because oh. of my caring for my mum and then the whole thing that she was caring for her mum and everything like that. Yeah. I don't know why I'm ending on this sad song, because um, sad way, because it shouldn't be sad, because I loved her. Oh, it's going to end sad, isn't it? I'm so oh, sorry. How long ago did your mum die? It wasn't long. She was died it? a year ago. When, in, um, I know you used to care maybe. for her and your dad, didn't you? I did. I did. Um, but I never put it on Facebook or anything, because... No, I, I couldn't ever bring. I couldn't ever bring myself to. And everyone has such a different way of behaving and being. And you know, I'm just so thankful that I managed to somehow claw myself by looking after them and going back to performing to do it. If you know what I mean, because anybody who wants to do anything, whatever it is, just kind of get over yourself and just go for it. Even if you think, exactly. you know, I, I, I'm not sure. Just go for it. Oh, I just. I've just enjoyed this so much. I was looking forward to it, but it's ten times more than I was even looking forward to it. You're oh, such goodness. a superstar. You've been one. Could you sing us one little more song? And uh, maybe Katie's got some pictures she could show. Could you sing us a little song in the background? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Uh, I haven't found for the picture. Don't change. Don't change me. Don't even try to rearrange me. Cause how I'm put together will break forever if you try. Don't change me to what you think I should be. Cause you've not met one like me yet. Don't fit into that, don't fit in there. Let me find my way, cause I care. Care too much what you have to say. Trying so hard not to sway into your right way. Cause what's right for you is wrong for me. I feel awkward and stifled. I need to be free, free to laugh and free to cry whenever, however, whatever. Don't change me. I know that I'm not perfect, but you know it's hurting me to be what I can't be for you. Don't change me or I'll have to leave you to somebody new. Lovely. Have I we got pictures yet to show? Possibly. Oh, pictures. Oh, there I am. That oh, I love like it. You might have done that. That oh, looks like great art. I love it. I love it. I love it. He's only eight. Yeah. Oh, Ooh, look at that. He did them. Oh, the lovers in there now looking in. Yeah. Lovers in love. Oh, I love that. Oh, I love that. Oh, I love it. Oh, I love it. Oh. That's Hilary Ian Johns. There we go. Oh my Yay. God, Ian Johns. Oh, that's Ooh. fantastic. Oh, that is oh, bloody fantastic. Oh, it's a Bloomsbury set. It's a Bloomsbury set. Oh, they might want to oh, know. Oh, I love it. it. Oh, I love oh, it. Oh, that's oh, beautiful. Oh. 
<laughs> He's laughing. <laughs> I, I recognise her slightly. Oh, that's good, isn't it? Oh, that, oh, is that David Cabaret's mate? No. Oh, oh that's brilliant. Amazing. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, lovely. Oh, I think that's, that's Jennifer that's Corker. That might be the lady with her notebook. Oh, that's lovely. I love it. I love it. But that's oh, only a few. I just want to say to everybody, I can't tell you how frightened I was to do this because I thought, I don't have any mates come to me house let alone these people come in my house. But because I love Sue Tilly so much, and Aww. I've enjoyed, and I I love just, you. you know what, what, what is it? I just sit there and uh, thank you, Sue, so much for asking me. I'm really, really, really chuffed. Everyone I've asked, they've all enjoyed it so much. And I'm nervous before I'm thinking, will it be all right? Will it go okay? And everyone now is all jealous of my friends. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> oh, you were marvellous. I can't tell you how much. Oh, Every, people are offering to put you up in St. Leonard's, admiring oh, your thinking. Oh my Fabulous. God. I think you've been such a. Oh, I love the story of your family. Oh, yeah. My. Um, my it's whole like a film. I think it should be a film. Because my, my sister still lives down in the basement. You know that. Really? I met yeah. her one. Do you met her? I know. And, um, and my niece and her children. I still. And it goes on. Pimlico life goes on. Because no, David, do you know David Brasher? Because he was brought up in Pimlico. He's watching. Yeah, it. no, I do. I do. And I'm so thrilled to have got him back because I love all his pictures. You see, because I don't have a garden, I love everybody that does gardens. Yeah. You know, some people get jealous, but I'm not jealous. I think how marvellous that they've got one. Do you know I'm what I mean? Lucky, I no, I'm so lucky since I moved here to have one. I couldn't believe it. Imagine me yeah. gardening. It's hilarious. So come, when it's open, come and do a show down here and sing. We'll find a venue for you. Oh, thank you, Sue. That's fantastic. I'd love it. Thank oh, you. Oh, everyone would love it so much. Oh, oh thank, you. Right. thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Let me tell you, next week we've got another chatterbox on. Oh. Called, um, Damon Rochefort, who Ooh. I don't know if anyone remembers a song called I Want to Give You Devotion by Nomad. That was him, because no man is Damon backwards. But now he writes Coronation Street. And oh, he's, awesome. a, he's a lovely, very positive person as well. So I think he'll be good fun. So thank you, everyone. And I'll carry a chat with Eve after you've gone. Oh, well, bye. Bye.